guys, it's DR Drake 63 here today, and uh, I'm showing you my Uberties. Uberties, which are made in Italy. For a long time, Uberti has been making faithful reproductions of Western classics. And what you see before you, this is the 1873 Winchester. And this is a very faithful reproduction. It's nice to see the level of detail that went into the quality of this firearm. Winchester does make these today. They are made in Japan. So your, uh, your options are a Japanese Winchester or an Italian Winchester. Or any number of things. I'm, I'm not here to knock Jap Japanese uh, ability to, to make firearms. It's not what I'm here to do, but um, just from a fit and finish standpoint, certainly the, the type of wood used and so forth, strong pref preference for the Uberti line. And you see that as well with these 1873 single action army revolvers. Now what you have, um, all three of these Firearms are chambered in 357, and for purposes of cowboy shooting, um, typically using 38s, pretty weak 38s at that. Um, these guys are, are primarily being used to shoot at targets that are metal, that are very close, and so a round nose lead bullet is the order of the day. But uh, I've shot plenty of 357 Magnum through here. They've handled them just fine. Um, I have been told that uh, if you shoot full house 357 Magnums through these, uh, they're not going to last as long, and that's true with just about every gun. I hear that all the time. You can't shoot full house 357 Magnums through this or that. And the truth of the matter is, most people that say that have never shot a full house 357 Magnum in their life. They're not reloaders. They go buy whatever's on sale and then they go shoot it. But what we have here are uh, examples of fine craftsmanship. Um, from a cowboy action standpoint, um, this is viewed as, as one of the better choices you can get. What a lot of people will do is they will slick up the action and make these so that they're easy even easier to work that lever uh, and they'll put short stroke kits on them which basically means instead of stroking the stroking the uh, um, the lever all the way out it'll cycle around without having to move as far down okay um, is that something I'm gonna do well, I guess if I ever get really into cowboy action shooting and real competitive I might I don't see a need to do that at this time. And there's things about those short stroke kits that have their drawbacks. They will weaken your action, which is probably not a big deal if you're shooting really super weak 38s. What you're looking at here is the Uberti Cattleman 2. And these are, these are basically able to recognize these by looking at the brass grip frame. Okay, and this this attaches as you see by these two screws here and by these screws on the bottom they attached to the case color hardened portion of the frame okay um, I am a big fan of the wood that Uberti uses as I mentioned before I think the, the attention to detail on, on these are very nice the one you see here, which is also a five and a half inch 357 Magnum, this is what's called the Smoke Wagon. It's a, a version that Taylor's and Company makes. They're an importer of Uberti, as is Stoger. But uh, what's different about this? It's got checkered grips versus the smooth grips. It, it has an all-steel frame. 
and the internals are quite different. In other words, there's a, a what's what's known as a slicked up set of springs and some extra polishing that's done uh, to make this a faster shooter. And again, from an, an accuracy standpoint, for cowboy action, the the types of shots that that are taken are based on speed and the accuracy is not very challenging at all um, becomes a little bit more challenging at speed but you're not shooting at great distances you're not shooting full house loads anything like that some knocks i have heard about these in the past i've heard that these front sights have come off I've seen that complaint on uh, on some older Uberties. I can't talk about for what's going on with these two. Both of these were purchased in 2018. Um, but I have shot 357 Magnums through these, and uh, they're quite comfortable to shoot in that respect. They are single action only. What does that mean? That means unlike uh, that Smith & Wesson or Colt you're used to seeing me shoot, you can pull this trigger all day and nothing's going to happen. You have to pull the trigger back every time. And then there you go. But every single time you pull the trigger back. Another thing about these is they're loaded via a loading gate. And they are loaded one round at a time. When you are done shooting you then eject using this right here and that's nothing but a spring-loaded rod that goes back into the cylinder and it pushes you around out the loading gate so as you can imagine reloading in a gunfight back in 1873 and beyond was kind of difficult and that's why most folks were carrying multiple guns. It's for a, what's called a New York reload. You have another gun loaded, ready to go. So you're not using speed loaders. It wasn't a thing. But what was very popular back in the day and oftentimes using 4570, 45 Colt and so forth was having a rifle that would use the same cartridges that you could use with your pistols. And so just like these are 357 or 38 special capable and can share all the same cartridges, um, you know, you're gonna get 10 loaded up in here. You've got a 20 inch barrel, which gives you uh, quite a bit more velocity than these five and a half inch barrels. Not to mention that with this long sight radius, you're going to have a lot more accuracy and a heavier barrel than shooting out of this kind of setup where you've you've got a five inch barrel a couple more here as you'll see there is no rear sight the rear sight is only visible when you have the hammer cocked back and then as you see it's right there so you you compare that to a modern revolver forget about it Something else I want to point out that Uberti has done. This firing pin is actually a floating firing pin. And the trigger must be engaged for this to protrude. And in other words, if that hammer were to accidentally fall on a loaded round, this is not going to set it off. Your single action Colts, the original design, which this is true to in every way except that, had a hammer that included the firing pin. When it fell, um, it was going to activate whatever round was there. And so some of it's myth, some of it's reality, uh, but basically um, guys would oftentimes not carry all six chambers loaded and would carry with that hammer down on an empty chamber. And the purpose of that was to keep uh, a possible accident from happening. 
Well, you're not going to have that with these firearms. You're not going to have it with a with a Ruger with a crossbar safety or so forth and so on. The original Colts or even uh, uh, today's Colts, if you could actually get one, don't have that feature. So what you hear from a lot of people is, hey, does it have that four clicks that spell C-O-L-T? In other words, does it go click, 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 click all the way back? And the answer is no. This goes click, click, click. And that's because of the addition of that internal safety. So there is that. So in that respect, the Uberti is not a faithful reproduction of the 1873, but to my knowledge, outside of that, it is the most faithful reproduction outside of an actual Colt. Colts, if you can get them, typically in this kind of a caliber, are going to be running you somewhere between $1,800 and $2,000 new. Yeah. Whereas this Taylor's smoke wagon deluxe which like i said is the is the tuned version of the smoke wagon uh it's gonna run you between 650 and 700 dollars this uberti cattleman 2 is gonna run you somewhere 475 to 500 give or take and the biggest difference there is this just has a better trigger better better springs a little bit more attention in the assembly and so forth uh, that Taylor's and company provides for that. So, out of these three firearms, I actually have one that does have a slicked up action on it. And I have to be honest, for my purposes, uh, being a greenhorn in cowboy action shooting, I don't really notice the difference. However, from conversations I've had with others and from people I've talked to, um, I will notice a difference if I ever actually become competitive at it. Good question. I don't know if I will or not. But I'm very impressed with Uberti's craftsmanship. I can comment to what I've experienced so far. And um, what I've experienced so far is some, is some fine, fine um, examples of firearms. What I have not experienced is putting high miles on them. And I know a lot of people in the cowboy action community prefer the Ruger Vaqueros because they are a more stoutly built firearm. I don't know how many of those same people are as comfortable working on firearms as I am doing something like a spring replacement or whatever the case may be and how much that factors into that comment. I know for myself, just from a standpoint of guns that I like to have and shoot, I like the original 1873 design a lot better than the Ruger's. Um, I've had a Vaquero. I didn't really care for it. But then again, like I said, I'm not, I'm not an experienced cowboy action shooter, so we have to be real careful how you take my comments. I am not a so-called expert. But what I am is somebody that knows what he likes, and I do like the more faithful in-hand reproductions of the 1873s as opposed to something that tends to be overbuilt and has a crossbar safety and other things I don't like. That's just me. Okay, so I mentioned uh, I mentioned folks will, will do things to slick up these actions, and one of the big things is to put a short stroke kit on it. What do I mean by that? Well, here's your your normal stroke, okay? You can see that um, this lever's going out well past uh, 90 degrees um, down from the gun. It's going down uh, about that far. If you put a short stroke kit on it, you can actually get the cycling to occur right about here or so. And so you, it makes you faster in terms of how fast you can shoot. And I just have to say, in, in terms of my situation, it doesn't matter because I can shoot about this fast. And that's it, okay? So when I'm working this lever and when I'm shooting this firearm, 
That's as fast as I can go right now. And I don't know if I'll ever get any faster than that now. Would putting a short stroke kit on this make me faster? I don't know. Maybe a little bit. Um, but like I said, I like to reserve the, the potential, at least at this point, of using this firearm for other things, just target or, or even hunting. And, you know, if I put a short stroke kit on this, I most definitely am not going to want to put a, a heavier 357 Magnum load in there because what I've done is weaken the linkage. I've got a, a video which shows the internal workings of this firearm. Um, actually, it's one of my more popular videos. I'm surprised. I just basically one day took this side plate off and showed the internal working and that was it. In terms of comparing uh, the slicked up trigger, um, this one does not have it. It's the Cattleman 2. In terms of length of pull, comparing that to the, to the Taylor, it's a little bit more sensitive. It's not a ton more sensitive, but it's a little bit more. Um, what I say, man, I, I, I definitely wouldn't want to compete or try to compete without the Smoke Wagon Deluxe as opposed to the Cattleman. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm absolutely not going to tell you that. I thought about maybe adding some shooting to this video, but here we are. It happens to be New Year's Day 2018, and it's all of about two degrees outside here in Minnesota. And um, not, not, not real conducive to going out and having fun outside shooting. Um, and I really don't want to go to a, an indoor range and deal with the confines and, and all that. I just don't think they go well with these firearms. So. I've done uh, videos on both of these pistols as well as this uh, particular rifle by Uberti where I do show some shooting. What I really hope to do is get better at shooting these firearms and uh, work on becoming more competitive at cowboy action shooting. But being I live in a cold weather state, I'm not going to really be able to do that until this spring sometime, probably late April. Uh, which is typical before I'm going to be able to do that. So uh, I will, of course, do some practice with these firearms indoors, but uh, definitely can't wait to uh, to get outdoors and to show you guys how these how these function uh, with me with a little bit more reps under my belt and um, also speak to the durability of them over time because you know I've through through these pistols I've probably. Each of these probably have somewhere in the neighborhood of six or seven hundred rounds to roam. So it's not a ton. Okay, so yeah, they both function. Neither of them have broken. Uh, but time will tell. I don't think that uh, we can draw any conclusions. And uh, I'm sure right now there's somebody that uh, uh, either has experience with Uberti's that's positive, that's going to say, Amen, dude, these things work great. Or you're going to have somebody that's had experience with them that was negative and they switch to Rugers and they say, hey, you should switch to Rugers. Or you're going to have somebody that doesn't have much experience at all but reads a lot of internet shit and then they're going to come out and tell me, well, you need Rugers, man. Those are birdies are going to break. I knew a guy who knew a guy who had a blah, blah, blah. That t tends to be the preponderance of the information you see on the internet these days. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about Uberti's, Smith & Wesson's, Rugers, Colts, you name it. Um, it's just the way it goes. But uh, I know I try to listen to people that actually have a lot of hands-on experience. Uh, and those are the people that uh, whose opinions I tend to value. Um, I'm not real interested in people who just parrot other information they see and they basically don't know what the hell they're talking about. But uh, as, far as, uh, as far as these firearms go, I plan to, to get a lot of miles on them this summer. Uh, so you'll have to stay tuned for that. But uh, I was uh, basically just going and doing some uh, some polishing up and, and uh, uh, cleaning out the safe a little bit here this week with some downtime. And uh, I thought, you know, gosh, these just look so pretty. I want to get some pictures and talk about them a little bit more. So that's what we're doing today with these uh, cowboy action type firearms, both 
from 1873 designs, the 1873 Winchester or the 1873 single action army. Colt design, Winchester design, all three of these made by Uberties. And uh, yeah, I'd love to have originals in all of them, but uh, uh, I don't have a bank vault in back of me, as you can see. So this is DR Drake 63. I want to thank you for tuning in today. And um, we passed a thousand followers on this channel here um, this last week. And um, I'm very excited about that. I'm flattered. I'm humbled. I'm surprised that a thousand people would want to subscribe to this channel. But uh, I'm glad you do. And, and, and with all sincerity, I really appreciate you doing that. Um, I hope you enjoy what I'm doing. I'm going to continue to try to give you uh, that honest, no BS approach of just putting my hands on stuff and telling you what I think. Have a great day. Have a great 2019. And we will talk to you again. See you on down the road, partner.